Hey guys, if you remember a few weeks ago, I did like some punch needle testing and I showed different ways of doing punch needle. So I did three strand, I did one strand, I, Athena quit. And I did six strand, I did uh, like two like two dimensions or two loop heights, then I did another one. So anyways, if you remember, we did that. I showed all six results in that video and I'll have a link below if you wanna go watch that video. The winner was, there were six, six different, uh, what do you call them? <laughs> Dancing with the Stars. This is my design. It's a cute little, I don't know, two and a half by two and a half, maybe eh, more like three and a half by three and a half. A little snowman called Dancing with the Stars. This is the one that won. It was number five. It beat number one by only one volt. <laughs> so it was a really close race. Number one was the called four colors and it didn't have dimension to it. This one, uh, it has, I punched the snowman, the entire snowman with including the arms and everything, and then the stars in one height. And then I did the background in a shorter loop. Okay, excuse my dog. Our son is here cutting, you know, trees down and stuff using the chainsaw, and she's going bananas because she wants to be out there with him. So hopefully she doesn't get too obnoxious. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh, so let me back up. We are going to, I, I decided that whichever one won, got the most vo votes. Oh my gosh. Whichever one got the most votes, I would fully finish it and then do a giveaway for everyone that commented on that video. Okay, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to film the finishing in case someone wants to finish it the same way. Okay, so what I have here is the finished punched piece. I have a little backing fabric. I've got my sticky board. I've got a ribbon for hanging it. And then I'm not sure which one of these I'm gonna use. I love this one because the color matches beautifully. I mean, like, okay more like perfectly matches. But I don't know if the pom-poms are gonna be too big. I'll know more once I get the ornament part done. If that is too big, then I will be using this color. This I know is Lady Dot Creates. I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of it. And then this one is Dames of the Needle. The color is Merlin's Magic. Okay, so I don't normally cut my weaver's cloth that close to the edge because, well, I just normally don't. But I had these punched, you know, another one punched right here, so I just cut like up the middle. That's why it's so short. I usually would leave a little bit more, but no big deal. So we're going to do the corners first, as always, using our hot glue gun. I always do my corners first. It's so pretty here today in Michigan. Today is April 28th, 2020. Uh, if you're watching this video six months, a year, two, five years from now, <laughs> I mean, yeah, don't look at my fingernails and judge me because we're in the COVID-19 pandemic and we've been on stay-at-home orders for a month or more and I never get my nails done but I just so happened to get my nails done when I was out of town at my friend's house in Tennessee and when I got home I haven't left yet so my nails are horrible from the cuticle to where it was painted is a good, it's more than a quarter of an inch now. Anyways, I've ordered the acetone from Amazon. I ordered it, but it's not gonna be here till like May 20 something. I guess the 21st or something. So my nails are gonna look even worse. 
here pretty quick, but whatever. It is what it is. I felt like I had to say that just in case you're watching this, you know, a year from now and you think, my God, what's wrong with this woman and why doesn't she get her nails fixed? So now I'm just gluing this over. If the chainsaw gets too loud, I'm going to have to shut the door, but it's so pretty here today. I have the, my slider door open in my studio, so. And Ryan's working right across the pond, right across the pond, cutting a tree down, so I may have to shut that. Please, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or what colors I used, matter of fact, I probably will just put a list of the colors in the description box just in case. That way it's done, in case you're wondering. Okay, now normally I would go around, like if I was going to adhere this to a piece of wood or something, I would go around the edges and I would color that white weaver's cloth with a similar color as as the last loop or just use black just so the white doesn't show up but because we're making an ornament this is going to hide it anyways whichever one I decide to use I don't know which one I'm going to use I was just thinking about this I think I'm going to have to have that put on there first yeah before I glue them together oops I'm getting that glue all over my sticky board. All right, so I'm just going to take my little piece here. I need a pencil. Yeah, I have lots of markers. I have lots of pens. Or, I'm sorry, paints. I'm over here, though, in my area where I paint. So I don't have a pencil right here. I'm going to have to go grab one. I'm just going to... So the, the corners on this little punched piece are kind of rounded. So this is just kind of giving me a rough idea of how I'm going to cut my... You know what? Why don't I just do it right up to the corner? I might as well do it that way. Okay. Oh, Lord, I need my good scissors. Excuse me, Teeny. My dog is all up in my girl. Yesterday and today have been really pretty days, and everyone is out working in their yards. So there's lots of lawnmower sounds and all kinds of noises. But I promised y'all in my last floss tube, floss tube number 72, that I would get this done this week. So I am keeping that promise. Now this is going to be what I adhere my fabric to. I'm just checking it to make sure it's not too big which I think it is a little bit too big. Yeah, especially the top and the bottom. That side looks good. Like, what is that? Jeez, old beats. All right. It's going to round this corner a little bit better. All right, 
So I'm basically trying to make that so that you don't see the sticky board on the other side. Like it's got to be a good size here. Then I'm just going to take sticky board, peel that off. Lay our piece of fabric down. We want to have a little border because we're going to fold that over so we have a nice finished edge. But before that, I'm going to trim some of this excess. ready with my next glue stick because I'm getting low. Alright, so we're just going to glue this down around here. Never fails. I mean, it wouldn't be a finishing project if I didn't burn myself at least once with the hot glue. Oh my gosh, it's all over my fingers. Okay, so now we have our little piece done. And I think it looks really cute. Here's the back. You guys know my finishing videos. My disclaimer is I'm not a professional finisher. I just do what I like and what I know how to do. <laughs> so when you look at your pom-pom trim, especially on Lady Dot Creates, on Lady Dot Creates, there's definitely a right side and a wrong side. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that good, but see how the balls, the pom poms kind of roll down over this edge. This is where you would want, you would want the part that's rolling down, you would want that in the front. If you look at the back, you can see how it's more flat. Oh, come on. So that to me is the back. But with Dames of the Needle, let's look at hers. Yeah, I would consider this to be the front. Dead gummit. I would consider that the front because see how the pom poms are kind of rolling towards the front and in the back it's more flat. So that way when I put it on here, it's going to cover. That actually looks cute. I think I am gonna use that color. I like it. Okay, move everything out of the way. I'm going to start. How about if we start on the side right here? I'm just putting a little bead of glue there. You don't want too much. You don't want it seeping out everywhere. And you want to put the pom-poms on so that they kind of... Well, you definitely want to cover your weaver's cloth. Let's put it that way. So what I like about hot glue is that it, you know, it, you can let go of it pretty much immediately and it's not going to move unless you pull it off or want it to move okay and then around the corner just be careful that when you go around the corner it's gonna lay nice okay so let's just put a little glue around the corner here Look 
Look how nice that looks. This little piece right here is really bugging me. But I have a fix for that. Those little tiny pieces. Just use a hot my heat gun. My, I don't know, my dog is glued to me. I think she's actually scared of the noise that the chainsaw is making because she is sitting on top of my foot. All right, so we're just going to continue with a little bead of glue, just doing little sections at a time because, as you know, hot glue sets up pretty quick, so we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves and have it cool off and, and then that work for us. But look how cute that's looking, y'all. Don't get too much glue because it'll make it harder for you. Because if it seeps out, you got to deal with that. And as far as there being a, a front and a back to the pom poms, that is my own observation and how I do my finishing. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. Um, the people to ask would be. Elizabeth at Dames of the Needle and Lois at Lady Dot Creates. They could tell you if there's a right and wrong side, but um, I don't know. I just, the way I finished, I kind of made up my own mind as to what is front and what is back. Okay, so I can see I have to clip it right there. All right. So there we have our cute little snowman with the pom-pom trim, trim on there. Super duper cute. Now, let's say a little prayer. My gosh, I just brushed all that onto my dog. <laughs> it's dangerous being by me when I'm finishing. And then we're just going to, actually I probably should have left that bigger. Because it's kind of showing on this back side here. Hold on. Got a big old wad of glue right there. I need to pull that off. Well plus the way you way the way I cut my I don't know if I'm laying it the way that I actually had cut it. So I can keep turning this until I find a direction that it looks the best. That is not impressive. I think I'm going to cut another piece a little bit bigger. Because what I don't like is this. Look. It looks okay like that. But then when you come over here, it's just it's showing where this meets the back. I'm going to go ahead and keep this piece. You know why? Because if I go to finish another one of those snowmen, if I'm going to use the chenille, I would actually put the thing together like this first and then put the chenille down in between the two of them. But chenille is a lot more forgiving than the pom-pom. So um, I'm working on a new piece, but I can see that I cut it too big now. So I'm going to dial that back a little bit. OK, 
Okay, I like it at the bottom. The sides look pretty good. I can see this. Okay, this corner has to be rounded more. And then this right here. This is not an exact science, at least for me. I tend to eyeball stuff. Okay, all the corners look good except this one needs to be rounded a little more. So when I go to put this on here, I'm gonna to have to make sure it goes on the same way as I'm holding it right now, because that's the way it fits. Now I think that's a much better fit, okay? So now, I gotta remember how to do this. Um, where's my fabric? Oh, I put that fabric away, I thought it was done with it. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do it. <laughs> this? <sighs> I ain't no Bonifafer. I'll tell you that. I think you can already tell that by watching me. It's going to be a cute little ornament. But I can tell you right now, it's not the most professional job you're going to see. And then I'm just going to flip this over. My head's probably going to be in the way because I've got to make sure I get this on here right. Because once it's on there, it's on there. Oh, it's really hot. I forgot to put the ribbon in. Son of a biscuit. Oh, Therese, Therese, Therese. I don't think it's too late, though. I just gotta peel that apart a little bit. And I think I got that too long. Boo boo, knock it off. Mama's not real happy with herself.
And then a, a little trick that I have, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that knows about this, is you use a heat gun and see all these little pieces of glue that show? You can melt those off. I'm back, y'all. I was not happy with... I was not happy with the back of this piece. Front, to totally adorable, super cute. Back, not so good. So I'm gonna take chenille. Chenille, remember I said forgiving. And I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm just gonna put some blue along there. Take my chenille and just fill in that spot because it looks horrible without the chenille there. I'm telling you, I'm not the best finisher in the world, but I know how to make things look nice. Let's just say that. Strings. Well, let me just tell you, chenille to the rescue. So now, here it is from the front. Love the bow. Flip it over. Here it is from the back. Now the back looks way more finished. I need to go over it with my hot, um, my heat gun. My heat gun will get rid of some of that glue that's showing and the little stringies and stuff. So yeah, now I can live with it. So much cuter, y'all, so much cuter. Yep, like I said, chenille to the rescue. For this little guy, I am going to paint this like a dark green, something similar to his hat. Then I will obviously hot glue the weaver's cloth down, and I will use Lady Dot's Create, Lady Dot Creates Mossy to go around the edge of this piece, and I'm going to attach it to this. This can sit on a shelf. I could even attach a rib ribbon and it could be an ornament or I could put a zigzag hanger on it and it can hang somewhere. So I might do all three that way. Whoever gets this can do whatever they want with it. So I'm just going to start by painting my wood block. Let's see. This one actually will look good. This is celery green. If it's not all dried up. Here's a shale green. Nope. I need some yellow in it. Celery green has a little tinge of a yellow to the green. I'm probably going to sand and stain it, so if this is a little bit light, it will darken when I stain it. So not to worry your pretty little head. Oh yeah, that's going to be way too light. Plus it will dry darker as well. This little plaque, uh, Woodline Works Corporation, New Brunswick, New Jersey, made in the USA. Probably got it at Joanne. That's where I normally get my wood pieces. I haven't been to Joann's in a long time. Quarantine 2020. I don't like that word quarantine. I like shelter in place. It just sounds nicer. <laughs> Let's candy coat it, right? This one time, <laughs> my girlfriends and I, we were, we were all together on a trip. 
I think we were, I don't know, we were somewhere up north. Kristen was in town and so we all got together and we were at the hotel one night and uh, one of my, our friends started kind of talking about some, I don't know, gloom and doom stuff and was just kind of being negative and um, I try to put a positive twist on a lot of things. Um, I mean, I know there's bad things in the world, but I'm not going to focus on those. Let's just put it that way. Anyways, I said, <laughs> I said, okay, just let me live in my own little world where teddy bears come to life and do human things and chores and have fun playing and frolicking and snowmen come to life and Santa Claus is real and, you know, sheep wear top hats, you know, this, that's my little world. Let me just be happy there. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes, you know, the world gets real ugly. And I think that's what's fun about some of my more whimsical pieces. They're just fun and innocent. I got a glump of, glump, clump of, there we go. A little paint, a little glump. Okay, so it's all painted. It's a little bit lighter than I wanted, but like I said, I this is a big, a big old glump because it was dried at the top of this. This is pretty much gone. Um, I'm gonna dr let that dry. I'm probably gonna come back in. I got the screen. I might go to mix that with the shale. I might even have to add a little brown in there to get it a little more grungy looking. This is Hauser Medium Green and this is Shale Green. Let's mix those together and see what we get. It's too green. It's closer than... I need to dull it down a little bit. So we'll just take a little bit of brown. Let's see here. Ooh, oh, here's a sap green. It looks really dark. Let's see what that is. Sap green. Ooh. So if I mix that in there, that might get us the deep, dark little color that we needed. I love mixing paint colors. It's so fun. That looks better. Just going over this, even though it's not quite dry. That's okay. This is kind of dulling it down a little bit. Darkening, darkening it a little bit too, but more importantly, dulling it down. As you can see, I'm not afraid to get paint on my hands. I think that green looks better. Can you see it? Yeah, that's much better. All right, we'll let that dry. That's gonna take a little bit. The paint is now dry, so I'm just taking some sandpaper. Let's kind of sand the edges a little bit. and go dump that in the garbage. Now you can use stain. Like I've got some Minwax stain here. This is ebony, which is super, obviously ebony is black. So it's going to be super dark. Plus stain is strong, small, and not as easy to clean up. So I've got this Carmel Colors. The Country Living Artisan Collection, Carmel Colors, and they have this toner, and I use that in place of stain anymore. It's water-based, there's no odor, and I just, it works just as good, but the cleanup is way easier. So it kind of yellows the paint a little and ages it somewhat.
And there you go. So now we are ready to put our punch needle on here, but I'm gonna let that dry for a while. While that's drying, first I'm gonna wash my hands. While that piece is drying, we are going to get our punch needle ready to adhere to it. Darn cute. Oh, yeah, that's going to look cute. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Just put a little bead. adding your chenille because once you put it on there it actually is thinner than just trying to hold it up to it I think it's going to be perfect again I just do a little bit at a time not to get too much glue on there and if you notice the chenille is kind of twisted So you want to kind of keep twisting it so that it's the same. Ouch! Oh, dang it, y'all. See? I burnt myself on the last one. Might as well burn myself on this one too. It's just how I roll. Somebody asked me in one of my floss tubes if my hands were just callous to getting burnt because I burn them so much or something. I'm like, no, no, I do still have feeling in my hands. And yes, it still hurts when I burn myself. I don't think you can ever get that callous dog on it. It's easier to apply the glue from the back side. That way you don't get it on your loops. But then I gotta flip it around so I can see how the front of this is looking. Okay, so then when you get to the end, you trim it. it off. And if you cut it right, you won't be able to tell where it ends and where it begins. Oh my gosh, this glue. It kind of drives me crazy. I know, short trip. So there we have it, our cute little snowman. Then we're just going to hot glue him 
onto this piece of wood. The thing with, you know, the punch needle, when you ad adhere it to something flat, it tends to, because you've got all this bulk around the edge, it tends to sink in in the middle, and I don't really like that look. So I'm just going to go get another little piece of something to put in there. I'll be right back. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. And I just want to cut a piece that will kind of go in the center. This is felt I bought at Joanne Fabric, and it has sticky on it, 9 by 12 Kunin felt. It's called cocoa. I like the nice dark color. It kind of goes with what we're doing here and I think that's going to fill that in nicely. just want to make sure that it's just in the center. If you're not good at eyeballing stuff, just measure it from here to here and then here to here and then cut it. You just, you just want to make sure where this glue is that you're inside of that. that does the trick. Oh yeah, so now when I put that on, it's nice and flat. Now we just take our glue. Go all along the edge without getting too close. We don't want it to seep out. Put plenty in there. And then kind of hang your head over top of it because you kind of only get one chance to get that on there right. Oh yeah. So there you have it. So now what we can do is we can either like take the sticker off. If you want to fully finish it, you could take this sticker off or you know what would be cute is to cut this and stick on there. You could do that so it's nice felt on the back. Or you can attempt to take this off, but it, the sticker is not wanting to come off. I would say if you take this off, then you could paint the back of this green to match the front. You could just adhere a piece of fabric to it. Um, or you can leave it as is if you're not going to worry about anyone seeing the back of it. Um, since I'm going to be giving this away, I probably will finish the back. I think it would be cute to put this on the back, which I think I will do, and then use that green. I could either use the green ribbon or this to make a little hanger. Let's, if that green ribbon matches, I'm going to do that. Let me go grab it. <laughs> I have this very cool hand-dyed wool yarn for rug punching and I think I'm going to use that for the hanger and then tie this as a bow. Okay so first things first and I'm going to put this on the back. It's going to have to be perfectly cut or I don't know if I'm going to like it. So we'll just see if this works. If this doesn't work I know how I am. this doesn't look good, then I will paint the back. All I can do is try. So...
let's pray that that is going to work. This needs to be cut a little bit more here. Okay, I think I got it. So, if I'm doing that and I want find the end of this big clump of right here. This matches perfectly. The only thing is it's going to make that stick out a bit right there. But Oh, I didn't even have it the right way. Good Lord. Okay, I'm going to glue this right here. I'm going to have these ends together. I'm going to stick them here, but I'm going to use a piece of paper <laughs> to push them on so I don't burn my fingers. So we're sticking this on the back. Now, this ribbon. I bought this ribbon at Sauter Village. I haven't been there in probably five years or more. So it was quite a long time ago. And I bought it from, oh, for a crying out sideways. It's the same place I got this from. I can picture her face. I can picture her booth. Can't think of the name of her business. She, she's in Kettering, Ohio. She does a lot of rug punching and different fabric arts. Oh, for crying out <laughs> This is finishing at its finest, y'all. Oh, for Pete's sake. Finishing at its finest. I'm trying, I was trying to make it so you could see it. I just feel like you can't see when I move my, when I move that way. business super sweet lady super talented she's needle felting rug hooking wool applique and she had a store I think now you can just buy from her online and then she does some shows um, awesome stuff I don't know how she has time to do all the things that she does I don't like this bow tied onto that because there's a gap there and it's really bugging me. So I think I'm just going to tie a bow and then um, glue it on to the wood part. So good at this. So good at it. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. <laughs> You didn't know it was going to be economy, economy, a comedy show, did you? Well, it is. Hey, if you can't laugh at yourself, you might as well give up. Okay. Don't take yourself too seriously. So I'm just farting around with this thing until I get it the way I like it. Well, it's a real, like, I love that, though, about this ribbon, that it's real curly and 
kind of wonky. Looks almost tie dyed. And I love that about it, but it's making it really difficult to work with. So yeah, when I glue that there, that's gonna look so much better. Just put a little dab of glue right here where the wood meets that. And then put our knot right there in the center. Just hold it there for a second before you start messing with it. I think it's a little bit long. It's gonna she had the cut. Ooh, that one curled right up. You can kind of play with it the way you might like it best. And there you have it. I think it's totally cute. Super duper cute. I like that. I love this curly ribbon. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You know the blue, there's no blue in this, but with that rust kind of bringing out the nose and the, the little arms on the snowman, I think it looks really cute. So there you have it. Oh, and if you have any little, uh, what do you call it, the little strings that you get from your heat gun or your glue gun just use a heat gun and it will just whoosh, they just disappear it's like magic so thanks everyone for watching